Welcome to another edition of the Go Knows Podcast. I am your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not an insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me, in my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. Um, my 49ers... You know, terror, reign of terror has come to an end. I, I'm not going to sit here and bag on Jimmy G. But clearly, it's, it's, you got to get rid of him. You know, because he has shown time and time again when the game, when the game has to be in his hands, he's just not the, the, the guy. So, um, that's it. That's all I'm going to say. Congratulations to the Rams. Congratulations to the Bengals. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a very good Super Bowl. I'm going to watch. I'm going to pull for the Florida State guys, Cam Akers and Jalen Ramsey. <clears throat> and um, that's it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I was just, I didn't think our run was going to end tonight. So I'm kind of <laughs> at a loss for words. Um, so, I mean, I'll get over it. I always do. But it's just a bitter pill to swallow right now. Um, I really like the way that the staff is recruiting at Florida State. I, I like the fact that you took some some losses in the early signing period. And you rebounded. You offset all those losses. Um, so I, I, I think this twenty twenty two is just. I'm I. I'm not gonna sit here and say ACC championship, but I, I think you 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 have put yourself in a position to be on the outskirts. Of looking at that, I think you've you've accumulated enough talent to where you could. It wouldn't surprise me that if they would make an ACC championship run. Okay, it all depends on who they put out there on the offensive line. That's 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 really the key to this whole team. Is who they put out there on the offensive line. Can they sustain drives? Can they score points? And that's it. Because if you give Jordan Travis time, he can make throws. And um, I think this year you might see Jordan Travis develop into a NFL quarterback. Because he definitely has an NFL arm. I mean, but I would love to see him get with like Shanahan or McVay or the dude up in Green Bay, you know, and just develop him as a quarterback. But um Ah man. Football football is such a emotional game. Especially when it's when it comes down to winning and losing, just as Madden, as John Madden used to say, the finality of losing. You know, it's just it's just so sudden that how this game can change so fast. And I mean Cooper Cup, man. I mean, jeez. You know? He's he's a special talent, bro. You you can you can say he's white, he's whatever. He he is he he's 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 just as good as any receiver I've seen in my life, bro. At least for this one season, he has been. And that's Jerry Rice, Randy Moss. I mean, who whoever, whoever else you want to name. I mean, he's just a, he's just a magnificent talent. 
with terrific hands, you know, gritty, hard nose, fast, athletic, deep threat. He can do it all, man. He can do it all. He he <laughs> he can do it all. So, I mean, I pretty much like the Rams in the Super Bowl. Um, I just, I don't think their defensive, I mean, their, the Bengals offensive line is going to be able to hold up against the, uh, the Rams. So I'm looking for the Rams to, to win this thing. Um, again, I'm pulling for the Florida state guys to get rings. So I just want a good game. I don't want to blow out. Um, I mean, I pretty much said everything I could possibly say as it pertains to Florida State. Um, I really don't know what else to say. Uh, you know, we can go more in depth about recruiting. We can go more in depth about, you know, who, what personnel they're going to put on the field. Um, I mean, one move that I would like to see them make is move Amari Gaynor from linebacker to pass rusher, defensive end, stand up. Because I think when he gets to the league, that's pretty much what he's probably going to play if he makes it to the league. He's going to go to a team that plays 3-4, and he's going to play outside linebacker. He's going to have to put on about 20 pounds and play outside linebacker and rush the quarterback. Um, I really don't see him as an every down linebacker. He's not like Fred Warner or, you know, some of the very, you know, he's not, he's not in that mold. He's more of a pass rusher. Um, you got to make a decision on Brownlee because he's a liability out there. You know, I mean, he's an okay player, but he he got beat so much this past season that yeah, he got beat so much that I really don't think you can really, if you're trying to win, I don't think you can really put him out there. I think you got to put the best players out there, and I don't see Brownlee as one of the best corners on this team. Um, from an emotional standpoint, you want to roll with him. You want him to succeed, but ultimately it's about putting the best 22 on the field. And to me, with the upgrades that you've made at corner going into next season, I just don't see how he's going to be one of the best 22. Um I think, like I said, in Florida State heyday, I don't even think that he's on his team. So we'll just have to see how it all plays out. He might be, he might go out there and outwork everybody and be the best. But it's just, you got to make some hard decisions at certain positions on this team. And uh, we're going to find out real quickly if this coaching staff is capable of doing that. Um, because they've they've shown you know, they'll stick with a guy no matter what. Like, Chubba Purdy should have been out there. Yeah, so Chubba Purdy should have been out there instead of your boy from uh, Central Florida. I can't even think of his name at this point. <laughs> That's how quickly I forget, guys. Um, um, but, you know what I mean? I think if you would have played Chubba Purdy in a couple of those games, he would still be on the roster. I think he was just tremendously frustrated. He just felt like he was a better quarterback than Mackenzie Milton. Excuse me for not forgetting his name momentarily. And I think he was a better quarterback um, just from a mobility standpoint. I mean, you know, Mackenzie Milton was a gnome back there. And uh, he shouldn't have been on the field. I mean... Yeah, this wasn't Mackenzie Milton from 2018, who was just a tremendous uh, player. Um, but even at his very best, it, he it took all of his body to make money throws. I mean, he li he literally had to use his whole body to make money throws. And once you took away his legs, I mean, we seen what his arm really was about. So 
not to bag on Mackenzie Milton, but it is what it is. And um, and I say that to say this, uh, again, uh, this, uh, this coaching staff has to make hard decisions at positions on this team. You can't just get locked into a player because you have some kind of emotional attachment. You have to put the best players on the field. And, uh, you know, if you don't do that this year, it might cost you your job. Um, so, I mean, that's really it for me. Um, uh, Florida State re-signed, uh, Ron Dugans and, um, uh, Odell Hagens, uh, to one-year deals. I, I really don't, um, I think Odell Hagens did a tremendous job with the defensive tackles last season. I think you got tremendous play from the defensive tackles. Um, so I don't know why they strung out his re-signing for so long. Ron Dugans, on the other hand, really didn't hit on anything as far as recruiting in the in uh, high school recruiting. I, I would hope that he was an integral part of getting those receivers out of the transfer portal. And, I mean, receivers struggled last season. But the offensive line struggled. So, and... In order to get good receiver play, you have to have great offense. Everything goes back to the offensive line on offense. Everything goes back to the defensive line on defense. It, you know, case in point, you had great defensive line play for most of the season, and the back end looked very good for the most part. Okay. If you can get great offensive line play this upcoming season, I guarantee you those receivers are going to be open. I guarantee you Jordan Travis is going to look more and more like an NFL quarterback if we can hold at the point of attack. Football, to me, is a very easy game to, uh, you know, diagnose. If, if I can get great offensive and defensive line play, there's a pretty good chance I'm going to win a lot of games. On the other side of that coin, if I don't have great offensive and defensive line play, there's a pretty good chance I'm going to be mediocre. And that's where we've been the last, what, four years, five years, whatever it is, 2016 was the last time I think we actually fielded a decent team, 10 and 3. Orange Bowl champs, you know, that's the standard, getting to a New Year's Day six game, winning 10 games. That's the standard to me. I mean, I don't expect this team in this day and age to be competing for national championships year in and year out. They just don't have the money, and this this school has always been cheap. So um, that's I think that's where – the fan base really needs to put their expectations. New Year's Day, six game, 10 wins, fringe ACC champs, every so often getting into the national championship picture, which is, which is pretty much where Florida State has been the last 20 years. The last 22 years or 21 years, whatever you want to call it. That's where we've been as a program, and we're not going to get out of that hole until we get a big money investor or we get some kind of tremendous NIL sponsor. It, it takes money to get these big-time college athletes now. That's just the, the, the sad part of it. That's, that's the way it is. And Alabama, uh, Georgia, Texas A&M, you know, most of your SEC schools, and you're probably going to see USC get into this picture pretty soon, you know, because they're, they're really in they're in the NIL gold mine, USC Trojans. They're in the NIL gold mine. It's untapped. And once Lincoln Riley starts winning, you're going to see, I really, gonna, I really think you're going to see NIL on another level. But... You know, I just don't see Florida State getting there. I mean, you you gonna need a billionaire type guy, like what Miami got with the Ruiz family. 
I look for Miami to be back in short order because they got that money now. They got a billionaire uh, sponsor. And, uh, you know, that's what it comes down to, money. So, um, uh, they they uh, put out the schedule. Um, I mean, I think we, I think, I think we can go seven and five, man. I think we can go seven and five. I mean, that would be real. That's realistic. Um, I would say Duquesne is better be a win. Louisiana is a win. Um, and then I think all your other games are pretty much 50, 50. I don't, there's no dominant team in the ACC. I don't think. Um, I think the defense is going to be improved. I hope the offense is improved, and we'll just go from there. So um, thank you for listening. I appreciate the support. Podcasts available everywhere podcasts can be heard, and it's also available on YouTube. I appreciate the support. The YouTube channel is growing, and, um, you know, I I would hope that I'm doing something right because, you know, I'm getting a lot of – uh, subscribers here lately. So definitely appreciate the love. And, uh, as always go knows.